What is it about Roxy Jacenko that irritates so many people? Surely not that the reality TV star and Sydney PR queen is smart and successful. Maybe then it's because she's a shameless self-promoter and that she reveals far too much of her and her young children's lives on social media. Two months ago, her husband was jailed for insider trading, but it was Roxy who stole the headlines during his court case. Now, there's more bad news. She's got cancer, but like everything she does, Roxy's not taking this setback quietly. Bye, Mom. Bye. Take good care of her. This is a very rare moment. For once, public relations powerhouse Roxy Jasenko is not the one calling the shots. Wheeled into surgery after what's been a disastrous year. This is the biggest and most unexpected test of all. Yes, I'm tough. Yes, I'm strong. I'm also inside. Probably a broken piece of glass in a million pieces. Are you scared knowing that you now have a fight for your life ahead of you? To be honest with you, when I sat in the doctor's office and they said you have cancer, um, it was almost like I knew in my mind. It was like so much shit has gone wrong. This must just be another thing. But here's the baffling thing about Roxy Jasenko. Where normally a breast cancer diagnosis would lead to an outpouring of sympathy, in her darkest hour, she was labelled a fake and a liar. And how does that make you feel when you do have it's people? It's unbelievable. You've got too much time on your hands if you say that. It is what it is. I'm unfortunately <laughs> the person who has got the cancer. My husband is in jail and I'm now a single mother. I don't really give a fuck what they think. No. Best known for her role as the rich, brazen PR maven Take it easy. on reality show Celebrity Apprentice. But you're fired. Two months ago, as her husband Oliver Curtis was very publicly jailed for insider trading, she enraged us by turning the courtroom into a catwalk. Where others would hide away, she remained defiant, sharing every second of her flashy life on social media. And people love to hate her for it. Does it bother you that people see you wearing outfits worth thousands, handbags worth tens of thousands, the Bentley, pictures of you in the private jet or posted on social media and believe that that was funded by money that had been stolen? It infuriates me. It's very, very aggravating. Um, and these ill-informed, small-minded opinions of that anything that I have, anything that I've given to my family, any luxurious holidays or whatever they may be, uh, were the proceeds of ill-gotten gains is infuriating because the reality of it is everything that I have and everything that I provide for my family is from hard work. What do you want? Oh, we forgot one thing. What goes in chicken soup? Chicken. Life is very different for Roxy these days. Of course we need chicken. With her husband indisposed, she races home from work to look after five-year-old Pixie and two-year-old Hunter, something she normally wouldn't do. Who does the cooking? Don't know. Don't, Don't know? know. <laughs> does Daddy do the cooking? Yeah. Ah, Daddy does the cooking, not yeah. Mummy. Is he a good cook? Yeah. Is Mum a good cook? Daddy big boy. Daddy's a big boy. <laughs> you watch? Roxy can't cook and never has, but she's learning. How are you yeah. juggling the business and being here with the kids? Um, look, it's definitely a challenge, I won't lie. Um, I now sort of... I would always work the when I came home, so. but now, obviously, it's a, it's a lot more challenging. Now I'll sort of go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, whereas before... <gasps> Pixie, what are you wearing? <laughs> Come and show us. How hard have the last few months been? They've been very hard. I put up a facade that shows that they're not as hard as they are, um, but behind that facade it is very hard. 
And I remember when, when I came home the day Ollie was sentenced, when the kids opened the door, they were so excited to see me and I remember I started to cry because I, all of a sudden there were these two little kids who had no awareness of what was happening um, and Pixie sort of pat me on the back and she's like, oh, Mum, did you have a bad day in the office? Was someone mean to you? And I was like, very bad day in the office, Pix. And I cried and she gave me a little cuddle and, it, it, you know, I, I guess it was at that point I went, OK, you've got to pull your shit together and you've got to get on with it. Growing up in a well-to-do family in Sydney's inner west, Roxy Jasenko was an awkward child. Cross-eyed, with low self-esteem, she was also a terrible student. And lingerie publicist Roxy Jasenko... But she transformed herself and, at the age of 24, an inexperienced but determined Roxy started her own PR company, Sweaty Betty. Years, I probably spent close to $30,000 on my shoe collection. She flogged her business and herself mercilessly with unbelievable success. When she to start. How would you describe your leadership style? Um, it's very in your face, I'm sure. My team will tell you. Are you a control freak? Yes. <laughs> Is that a trick question? No, I am. I'm a, I am a control freak and I'm very OCD, but you know what? I think it's testament to, to the success of the business. 7079... Today, the 36-year-old runs three companies with a staff of 20 Roxy look-alike workaholics. That's yeah, a good one, Paul. You were back at work within hours of both of your children being born and posting it on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but isn't that what everyone does? No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you get wheeled back into your room, the baby is fast asleep next to you. What was I supposed to do, stare into space? So, yeah, I've turned my... Take a break. No, but a break for me is my emails. <laughs> Make no mistake, my, my children come first. They do? Your no children, question. they do come first? Yeah, I mean, they're my best friends. I can rely on them every single day. You have to look at the camera and jump, as hard as you can. Ready, go. Like mother, like daughter. Whoa. Pixie is now a star on Instagram and the face of her own company, Pixie's Bows. Roxy has long been accused of exploiting and commercialising her daughter. But it turned ugly early in the year, when a business rival circulated, doctored, sexually explicit photos of Pixie online. It was a disgusting attack on the PR queen and she took it to the police. I remember my hands were shaking and I started to cry and so the constable called over a detective and I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I'm sorry I can't pull myself together. Um, and, yeah, you know, everyone will say, well, she's got her kid on Instagram so it's her own fault. Um, Did you expose her to that? I don't think I exposed her to that. I think the reality is whether she was on mine or had her own, they still would have picked her for the fact that they thought it would get to me. Love you. Love you. But 2016 was about to bring more headaches and heartache. It's a long way from the affluent eastern suburbs of Sydney to the Cooma Correctional Centre here in country New South Wales. But a few weeks ago, it became home to Roxy's husband, Oliver Curtis. Before their fairy tale romance, he'd committed a serious crime. And by the time of their lavish wedding in 2012, investigators were closing in. How did you find out that he was accused of stealing $1.43 million in insider trading deals? Um, I don't know that we should use the word steal, to be honest with you. Um, but the reality... But it's it... make money from illegal insider trading tips. I mean, that's stealing. I think what, for me, I mean, out of, out of that question is that he pleaded not guilty and he maintains the not guilty. Um, Papers were served when we were at home and he was waiting for a pizza one evening on a Sunday night. Um, and you know what my question to, to, to Ollie was, did you do it? I said I didn't do it and I'm going to fight it because I didn't do it. 
How are you feeling about this next Nine years ago, when Curtis was 21, long before he met Roxy, he and his childhood friend John Hartman conspired to buy and sell stocks using insider tips. The scam netted them a fortune, which they spent on extravagant holidays, apartments and fast cars. Eventually, the law caught up with them. Hartman pleaded guilty and agreed to give evidence against his former best mate. What has Oliver told you about what happened? We don't discuss it at You've all. You've never asked him, what did you do? No. I think you also have to remember that it happened years and years and years ago, well before my time. But it's impacting you and your children now. But the importance for me is to maintain my focus, and that is that he pleaded not guilty. But if you've never asked him what happened, how can you sit here and be so sure that he's innocent? Look, call me crazy. Some people would want to know the, the, you know, the ins and outs of everything. I haven't asked. I find it really hard to believe that you don't you know. ask that question. <laughs> a lot of people do. A lot of people find it strange that I haven't asked all but of the But you're a very questions. forthright person. Are you just burying your head in the sand on this? He's got no reason to lie to me. He can tell me the truth. Um, and irrespective of what the truth is that he says to me, I'm there no matter what. After a three-week trial, the jury found Curtis guilty in June. He was sentenced to two years jail, but will be out in 12 months. Your husband's a criminal, a white-collar thief who committed a serious crime and has shown no remorse. Yeah, well, they're all, you know, uh, sensational headlines from a newspaper or a TV show. But well, they're all facts facts at the moment, but the appeal is lodged and it'll be heard on the 19th of October. Do you think that Oliver in this case received so much attention because of his relationship with you? Yeah, I do think about it a lot. You know, maybe if he hadn't married me, it would have probably not been something that had would become such big news, probably wouldn't have. And I hope that I didn't contribute to it. Even the judge singled you out? Yes. Yeah. There is no evidence that Mr Curtis himself has invited media attention. He is not to be equated with his wife in this context. It was like I was on trial, even though I was there just supporting him. You posted pictures of what you're wearing to court on your social media account every single day. People thought you were making a mockery of the process, yeah, that you were well, using the courtroom as a stage. I didn't alter my day-to-day -day activities. I didn't alter my day-to-day -day lift selfies. But should you have court. done? I mean, this wasn't just a normal day. Well, and your me, husband's freedom was at stake. At the end of the day, it was also a normal day for me. I'm in fashion PR, so of course I'm going to have a nice outfit. That's what I do. When did the reality kick in for you that he wasn't coming home? Seeing the picture of Ollie with the handcuffs being led into the prison van was a very uh, horrible feeling. It, they, it was the worst. It was like the picture you never, ever want to see. And it's a picture that I never thought I would see. Did the kids see that shot? No, no. You know, it's crazy. I'm, like, running like a blue-ass fly every time something comes on the television. Quick, turn it off. You know, um, because I won't expose them to that. You know, just imagine, they see their dad with handcuffs. So, no, I, like, made a dart for the TV, believe you me. Still to come, attacked and called a liar. As someone wrote on Hunter's Instagram, how's your mummy's fake cancer? Her defiant comeback. It really fires you up, doesn't it? It makes me angry. And doctors finally reveal the extent of Roxy's cancer. That's next on 60 Minutes.